Mr. has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Toth, for being here to discuss this. Um, bill, I know in the regular session you weren't able to be in the in this committee hearing to discuss the bill in this format, uh, so we had to do it on the House floor. I'm very thankful that we have more time to, to dig into it now. Um, so you've added SB3's provisions to your House Bill 28, is that correct? Some of them, yes, most of them. Is there any provision of SB3 that does not appear in this new version of HB 28? We, we just got this before the hearing started, so I just want to make sure. Yeah, it, it's, um, the transparency is a little bit more clear in it. Also, and again, as I further stated earlier on, it's page, page 8, and that will be in a subsequent committee substitute, lines eight, three, 18 through 24 are coming out. Great. I, I'm, thank you for taking out that part of the bill. I know that's one we discussed on the House floor, and so I, I appreciate you taking it out. I did want to talk quickly about the transparency piece. Um, and let me just add ahead. one thing. That's current law, it is, as it is right now. As what is right now? Well, as th that's in 3979, and that's current law. So we that a teacher may not be compelled to discuss current events? We'll be amending that. We'll be taking it out of current law? Got it. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, back to the transparency piece. Um, wh why do the transparency requirements only apply to large school districts? We felt that they, they would be ones that would be more easily equipped to handle it. I, I, as you know, and I know you're not a member of the Education Committee, but most of the large districts tend to be urban. They tend to be the ones with the most students of color. Um, if transparency is... Conroe Independent School District is, is the 10th largest school district in the state of Texas. Sure. It applies I, to my district as well. Sure. I said 10. So I, there, know, there are, of course, exceptions. Uh, if transparency is important, shouldn't it be required of small rural districts too? If that's an amendment that you'd like to, to make, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, I mean, we can talk about that. Sure. Right? I don't want to make a commitment. Sure. I want to discuss it more with... Right. With we just want to make sure if yes, we're sir. requiring transparency, it's required of yes, all sir. of our populations, not just yep. um, rural, predominantly white populations. Um, this, you know, the, my concern, as you know, Representative Toth, that this entire bill is an attempt to micromanage teachers. And I know that's not how you view it, uh, but that is how, as an educator, how I see it. Um, you admitted on the House floor that uh, you're not, nor have you ever been, a classroom teacher, uh, you've admitted that you don't have a degree in education, you've admitted that uh, every major education group in the state opposes this bill. So I guess my question is, why do you think you know more about teaching sto social studies than our social studies teachers? I'm hearing from parents, and I think at the end of the day, I care more about what parents have to say than anybody. Um, this is what we've heard. Um, basically, it's been over-the-shoulder parenting. What? As we've gone through... I'm going to answer your question. Yeah, please. Sorry. As we've come through a year of COVID, now a year plus, and we've heard from multiple parents that have said, I was aghast to hear some of the things that I was hearing in my classroom, in my child's classroom. I wasn't surprised to hear it because I started hearing it from my daughter when she came back from the University of Texas six years ago. This appeared on my radar. And it's only been because of COVID and virtual learning that parents have become upset about this. I think a lot of them thought that this was just a one-off thing that was happening in their kid's classroom. But then as you start hearing videos of administrators across the state of Texas instructing teachers on how to teach critical race theory or in, as it's denoted in the Chicago Public Schools, culturally relevant teaching, it's the same thing. And parents are concerned about it, and they're rightly concerned about the fact that, you know, we thought we were coming to a place where racism was starting to wane and die in the United States. Um, I'm not saying that racist representatives don't exist. They absolutely exist. Absolutely. You and I agree, with that. I agree on that 110%. But we were coming to a place where we didn't want to define people by the color of their skin or their gender. And that's exactly what critical race theory does. I, and I understand that you've uh, heard stories and rumors and anecdotes about what's happening in classrooms. Has there been any um, systematic study of, of this problem that you claim exists in social studies classrooms across the state? You state? only have to read some of the critical race theorists, whether it's Ibram Kendi 
Sure. I'm asking about what's occurring in classrooms in Texas. Their books are, their books are being used in, in Texas classrooms. And we're having, I mean, I have a video from um, Connor Penna School District talking about what's being taught in the classroom. So aside from uh, these anecdotes or videos that you see on Facebook, are there any, is there any kind of study that has been done by the Texas Education Agency or any of the respected education groups in well, Texas? I'd love about to see the, us do one. If you'd like to support that, I'll, I'll put the sure. a, a bill forward. So let's do that. Well, typically if we... you're for that, I'd like, I think that's a great idea. Typically, as policymakers, we, we find out if there's a problem first, and then we file a well, bill. Well, we know there's a problem. We're hearing from parents that there's a problem. Well, we know you've heard there's a problem. We don't know there is a problem. Um, t can you tell me why, why do you think that most of the major education groups, including most of the teacher groups, oppose this bill? Um, you'd have to ask them. Um, I, th I thought conservatives believed in local control of education. Um, so I guess my question is, wh what happened to that? What happened to that is local parents from around the, across the state of Texas have asked us to reassert parental rights in the classroom. Pr parents across the state of Texas feel like they're being disregarded, their wishes are being usurped. And those parents uh, still have the ability to go to local you, school boards, is that, that right? You've heard, one of the things that you've hear, heard here over and over again is that parents feel like they're being disregarded and their wishes are being disregarded. Sure, I appreciate they, that. They come to us as um, state representatives and say, Please reassert my, my rights. Sure, those, those parents in a public ISD still have the ability to uh, attend school board meetings, lobby school board members, even run for school board themselves if they believe that a policy needs to be changed in a local education community. Is that right? Well, let me ask you a question. What, what in the I, I just no. want to make sure you're answering sure. the questions I ask. I, no, I want I, this to be a respectful parents, dialogue. Fair, no, absolutely. That's, that's fair. Um, yes, parents need to be more involved in the local, lo local classrooms. Absolutely. And traditionally, conservatives believe that's where decisions of education policy should occur, not at the state or federal level. Yet we do have policy that is derived from it at the state level, don't we? Sure, of course. Uh, but I think... We just heard that from the prior bill that was just, that was just heard that will be voted out. Right. I'm just trying to make sure that you're uh, staying consistent and that you're living up to the sure. ideals that you claim yeah, yes, to sir. believe in. Um, I want to ask you about the uh, part of the bill that says... Uh, that prohibits a teacher when discussing current events from giving deference to any one perspective. That's been removed that, from the bill. Say it again? That's being removed from the bill. Okay, so you, you said that lines 18 through 20 are being removed. Does that also mean the, the next four lines, 21 through 24, are also being removed? I just want to make sure I'm clear about what's being taken out. I'm looking at bottom of eight, page 8, subsection 2. Yeah, let me... A teacher let me who chooses... I apologize. It's okay. Take your time. Yeah, it's subdivision two. It's, it's, 20, it's lines 21 and 21, 22, 23, 24. Got it. So teacher who chooses to discuss. That's all coming out. Great. So 18 through 24, both of those, uh, subsection one and subsection two. One and two. two. Perfect. Okay, great. I had questions about it, but I'll move on. I'm glad those are being, uh, both of those subsections are being uh, taken out. So on uh, page six of your bill, starting at line 13, uh, you repeal uh, important academic standards that the Texas House added to our social studies curricula in the regular session. Is that right? That's being covered again by House Bill 4509 which was, had unanimous support in the Senate and with only two, um, two votes against it in the House. So the amendments that we added to this part of the bill, to 3979, in the Texas House, are any of those amendments being repealed in this, in this version of HB 20? All, all the reading material was, both, the, both, the, um, both what was added and what was currently in the bill. Right, and, and those, those additions... Uh, that we added in the House in the regular session. Th those were agreed upon by Republicans and Democrats, right? Correct. Um, and you agreed to those amendments, if Correct. I remember correctly, right? Um, you're arguing that the House amendments you're repealing already exist in the social studies teaks, is that right? Correct. Um, but that's not true for all of them, correct? We're not changing the teaks. We didn't change the teaks in 3979, and we're not changing the teaks in this bill either. So we added new standards, new content to the standards in 3979. Which was redundant with 4509. 
And so those are being removed in this version of the bill. Correct, because right. it was redundant with 49, 4509 that we, we had total unanimity on out of the Senate and only two dissenting votes in the, in the so House. So are there, are there uh, parts of the standards that we added in the House that are no longer going to appear in the Teaks? Correct. Right. And I'm going to walk but through... Those things, those things that we took out are already in the Teaks. So we did not change the teaks in effect in any way, shape, or form. So, so things, the two things ahead, that you're dealing ahead. with, as an example, are um, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. the teaching of the Ku Klux Klan. It's sure. already in the teaks. Yep. Multiple uh, places. So my point, and yes, I agree with that. Um, Thank you. Certainly not in the, you know, maybe not in the way we phrased it in the bill, but, they, but you can maybe cite where it's currently in teaks. I guess my point is that not every standard that we added in 3979 is already existing in the Teaks. So for instance, we added uh, writings of Frederick Douglass, uh, particularly from his newspaper, the anti-slavery newspaper, the North Star. But Frederick Douglass is already in the Teaks. Sure, but, but what, we're, what I'm saying is these additions that we thought were important, you know, we talked about you know, listing out some of these founding documents yes, that traditionally aren't included in social studies sure. curricula. Those things are, not, are no longer going to be included in our Teaks with this new bill. I would we're have loved to have them. seen that stay. I would have loved to have seen Katie Stanton's. She was one of the early mm -hmm. um, um, feminists, if you will, or mm -hmm. um, what's the other word? That's what, they weren't called feminists. In Feminist ways. works? That's, it's, uh, that word suffragettes. works too. Yeah, suffragettes. And Katie it's, Stanton was a strong um, abolitionist. She was pro-life. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen that to stay in as well. But again, we're trying to truncate the reading list to make it manageable for our teachers. Right. So you, you removed these from the teaks, the, the additions that we as a House, Republicans and Democrats, added in the last session are being removed in your we new had, bill. We had unanimity around 4509. I, I was just, I'm just asking that. to make sure that the, I, yes, I'm clear. Sir. They're being removed. Okay. Yes. And so that, that includes some of these specific writings of Frederick Douglass. Uh, it removes mentions of founding mothers of the United States, uh, people like Martha Washington and Abigail Adams um, and uh, Phyllis Wheatley. You know, those folks are being removed. Um, talking about certain critical pieces of writing from Thomas Jefferson that were uh, explicitly added in the standards in the last session. Mentions of the Chicano movement are being removed. Uh, we already talked about uh, you know, maybe the most, uh, the most uh, important amendment that we added as a House on a bipartisan basis was explicitly requiring that students learn the history of white supremacy in the United States. That is being removed from our standards in this new bill. Again, it's already in the teaks. There is a, in the teaks, there is an explicit mention that the history of white supremacy should be taught. It's, it, it discusses the Ku Klux Klan, yes. I'm not asking about the Ku Klux Klan. I'm asking about the history of white supremacy as a whole, not a specific example. Is there a provision in the teaks that requires that students learn the history of white supremacy? The Ku Klux Klan is in there, yes. I, I, just, I need a simple answer to my question, Representative Toth, and I don't mean to be short. Uh, it's been a long day. It's been a long month. Um, so I want you to answer the it question. It has been a really long month. Is, is there any specific mention in our teaks after this bill, if it passes, is there going to be any specific mention of, of the history of white supremacy in our educational standards? Starting with the Ku Klux Klan, yes, and, and it also goes to the Jim Crow movement as well. Representative Toth, can you tell me in the teaks where it will say the history of white supremacy should be taught after this bill passes. Um, the ethics study, um, ethnic, it's the ethnic studies on African, -Ameri African Americans, it's, I can't read this writing, um, uh, section C for C and D. That's an elective course. I'm asking in the social studies standards that apply to all students in the, the state of Texas, yes. is there a mention of learning the history of white supremacy? If it's, look, we're not. Well, there, well, there, is, there is now, right? Because we, you and I, together, a Democrat and a Republican, we added that, right? Because you and I thought it was important that students learn the history of white supremacy. And I wasn't right? aware that it was already in the teaks. You said what? I was not aware that it was already in the teaks. It's, it's not in the teaks for our social studies standards. It's in the TEKS for an elective course that not, all, not every student has access to. In fact, most students in the state of Texas don't have access to. So I, I don't want to be cute about what's, what's in the TEKS and what's not. I want us to be honest. And if you feel it's important to remove the history of white supremacy from our social studies standards, then you yeah, should say that not, up, up front. Throughout the, throughout the TEKS, 
there's plenty of, of language about Jim Crow. There's plenty of language about slavery. And um, the Klan and Jim Crow is not considered elective studies. Mr. Toth, I think the, the problem has been throughout this entire discussion is that many of us in both political parties recognize that white supremacy is something much larger than just folks who wear a white hood. What, right? And it may be, and it may, it let, me, let me just I'd, I'd finish my thought and let me can finish yours. Yeah. Sure. You know, it's convenient for s some people in this discussion about race to limit white supremacy to people who wear white hoods and, and pretend that it's in the past and it's something we no longer have to learn about, something we no longer have to struggle with. The purpose of that amendment that you and I both added and that every member of the House consented to was to ensure that students are, are grappling with the entire history of white supremacy from the beginning of our, of our country up until the present day, well, rather, actually, than, the rather purpose, than just limiting the discussion the purpose to of the one particular that group. I agreed to, actually, and that I signed on to was the Ku Klux Klan and eugenics. And it was defined, white supremacy was defined by, if you look at that amendment very carefully that I signed on to, white supremacy is defined by the Ku Klux Klan and eugenics. And you'll recall eugenics. What was the purpose of eugenics? And the founder, the founding person, um, Margaret um, Sanger, and it was the elimination. She wanted to eliminate black people from our culture. Representative she was Tuff, a terrible person. So you talk about the wording of the amendment. I wrote the amendment. Um, actually, no, he actually I, didn't. Briscoe I have it, Kane wrote I have it in front of me. Briscoe Kane wrote the, the history. For you. Bris, Briscoe Kane added the uh, eugenics part because it plays well with the, he with the radical pro-life movement. He wrote uh, pro three amendments movement. for you, and that's the one that the, you the actual amendment says. The history of white supremacy, including but not limited to the institution of slavery, the eugenics movement, and the Ku Klux Klan, and the ways it is, in which it is morally wrong. So the, the purpose of the amendment that I wrote, Representative Kane added some thoughts to it, but the purpose of the amendment that I wrote and that you agreed to was to ensure that our students are grappling with all of white supremacy, the full history of white supremacy in our country. That, that was yeah, the heart. And, and, and so the fact sure. that you're removing that now it's already in state law. We all passed it, right? The Texas House passed it. The Texas Senate passed it. And you're going out of your way in this special session to remove the history of white supremacy from our general educational standards. No, and that's, we're not. that's white what's troubling. White supremacy is already in the teaks right now. And, we, and the Klan is already in the teaks right now. If you'd like to, I, Representative, if you'd like, if you'd like to, seriously, if, why don't you define what a white supremacist is today? So, yeah. So, Representative, Representative wait, 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 wait just a minute, wait just a minute. We cannot have a committee hearing where we have people, other than when you're at the microphone testifying, you have to remain silent. We don't allow demonstrations. We don't allow speaking out um, because that interferes with the whole process. You may not like what's being said, um, but I would just encourage you to bite your lip. <laughs> Uh, than say anything because that will cause us not to proceed in a manner that is consistent with the House rules. And so I would ask you to be quiet. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. And I, I want to answer your question, but then I do want to move on because we do I have and a, I, lot, and I just want to, a lot of questions. I'm good with the, our exchange. Yes, of course. And I, and I appreciate you, Representative Toth, engaging in these questions. And you and I did it on the House floor and very thankful that you're here to do it in committee. Uh, so I do actually have uh, the Merriam-Webster de definition of white supremacy, which is the belief that, white, that the white race is inherently superior to other races and that white people should have control over people of other races. That's one definition. Of course, there are many others. The, the point is that white supremacy existed at the founding of the country and its legacy still exists today. And that's what we want students to grapple with. And we don't want to limit it to, uh, to a simplistic, cartoonish definition of white supremacy, which just includes the KKK. Representative Toth, you're, you're arguing that the House amendments that I'm talking about, that you're repealing in this bill, already exist in the social studies teaks, and we've, we've gone through why that's not true. It, sure, it certainly is true for some of them, and I want to grant you that, but it's not true for all of them, especially these really important amendments about the history of white supremacy. But even, even if it was true, what you're saying, the standards that you're leaving in the bill also already exist in the social studies teaks. So, for instance, you made you went out of your way to make sure that the founding documents of the United States is included in this bill, which I agree it should be. But the problem is that it already exists that's, in the elementary school teaks, the middle school teaks, and the high school teaks, that's, right? That's for, in 4509. It's not, 
There it's in this committee sub that I'm looking at. I'm not, do I not have the correct? 45, 4509 deals with the documents. But I'm looking, at, I'm looking at your bill right now about what's included. If it's, you're looking it, on page... That may be redundant with 4509. Sure. I apologize. Uh, that, you don't have to apologize. Um, I just need this, I need this bill to, be, to live up to the, yeah. to the so, rhetoric that you're using in this committee that hearing. Was, that so was one Representative seven, Conan and Senator Taylor came up with. with and, we, and again, we wanted the whole intent. When we walked away from this thing, we heard from a lot of teachers saying, man, you've completely overloaded us with reading material. Can you truncate it? And um, this is already done in 4509, and we wanted to leave that in place. So every single organization that, that of teachers in the state of Texas has been vocally in opposition to this bill. So I, I want to make sure that that is on the record. But just, just so we're clear, on page 7, um, line 3, subsection D, we are going out of our way, although we're appealing the part of white supremacy, we're going out of our way to make sure the founding documents are included, which I, I would like to see both of them included in this bill. But in the elementary school teaks, in the middle school teaks, and in the high school teaks, students already have to learn about the founding documents. So that's, that's why when you say, well, we don't want anything to be redundant, it rings a little hollow, right? Because a lot of the things that you went out of your way to include is already redundant. Um, so you're being selective about which standards you're repealing and which ones you're leaving in. Can the I, ones that are, let me the one, can I just have one hold on real quick. I want to finish this thought. Okay, you bet. The the ones you're repealing are the ones that primarily deal with prominent women and people of color. The standards you're leaving in primarily deal with the that's, that's founding correct. fathers. So Katie Katie Stanton is not a person of color, and I, I, again, I would have loved to have seen her works left, and I would have you know. Um, um, Another person that who, who came out of it, too, was um, trying to think of her name. <laughs> hey, this is probably why we should include them in our social studies teaks, right? <laughs> so You're I want to... I, wanna... I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't slept in probably... That's okay. That's okay. I've, I know we're all I've tired. Probably, um, probably, it's, it was Susan B. Anthony. Sure. Was another person that came out of this. Yep. And, 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 and you say, you know, I would have loved to see this, would have loved to see that. You're the bill author. You're, yes, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I hope that... Y yes, I am. But again, this is primarily a civics... This is intended to be a civics bill. And the founding documents deal with the form of governance, which is civics. And so, there, 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 has been, uh, there has been educational creep into a lot of different subjects and areas with this bill, and we're trying to bring it back to... There, there is certainly a lot creepy about this bill. Um, I would say the one that I'm most concerned about is the hey. serving service learning ban, be right? Nice. Which we, John, you can be nice. We talked about, you know, it, Vanderbilt University def defines service learning as a form of experiential education where uh, learning occurs through a cycle of action and reflection as students seek to achieve real objectives for their community and a deep understanding of, and, and skills themselves, right? And, and I, I think we all see the value of service learning. As an educator, I certainly see the value of service learning. In the original bill, one of the major problems that I had that we discussed on the House floor was this ban on service learning uh, in our civics classrooms, where students uh, may work with an organization that does engage in some kind of advocacy or some kind of lobbying um, or some, or some kind they, of issue policy work. Uh, they can't receive course credit, which... Can't receive course right, credit. Right, so that means it's no longer a service learning program, it's just volunteering on your own. They're still welcome the, to... The reason we want we students... Wanted, we don't want the public education system in the state of Texas to compel our students to do things, to get a grade. That should right. be up, up to parents. Right. And we certainly want to compel any students to do anything. Yes, but sir. what we want to do Thank is make you. sure they can access class credit when they do participate in a service learning program. And, and so in, in the discussion on the House floor, I remember I asked you about, would this ban apply to students who want to receive course credit by volunteering with the Rotary Club? It would not. And I remember you said that on the House floor. And, and I remember telling you that the Rotary Club engages in federal and state advocacy. So under the definition of your bill, a student who wants to volunteer with if the Rotary Club if, if would not be able if to. If it's lobbying work, no. They're, they're not allowed to in, be involved in so any So you're saying a student, a student now, can engage. Club, if the Rotary Club, as an example, said, hey, we're going to do um, a weekend where you go to the Capitol and you learn how to draft bills and you learn how to get a bill out of committee, and you learn how to argue the bill in committee, and you learn how to get it to calendars and to the House floor. It doesn't ban any of that stuff. So you're saying a student can take part in service learning with an organization that engages in lobbying, is that right? As long as they're not doing it on behalf of um, um, a political, uh, you know, a bill that's before the House or the Senate. But yes, they, they're able to go into 
to the, to the Texas Capitol? And so the, the original version of the bill in the regular session was saying you couldn't, part, you couldn't engage in service learning with an organization that participates in advocacy or lobbying. That has right. been changed in you this bill? You can't lobby. You can't lobby. The that's, student that's can't, the but they can, they can still engage in service learning with an organization that does. It, am I understanding you correctly? I, I'm seeing a difference between the, regular, the bill in the regular session and this bill. Am I seeing that you difference? You, students cannot lobby. That's the intent of the bill. Right, and so the language has changed from the original version in the regular to this version? I think we brought some clarity to it. They can't, and so as an okay. example... I just want to make sure that... There was, there, was a, there was an article that came out about McKinney ISD cancels popular government elective citing Texas' new anti-critical race theory bill. So I just want to make sure, as the bill author, you can confirm that that language has been changed in this... But even going back to the original I, language, I'm, even going back <laughs> to the original language, lawyer after lawyer, even... Um, this is from the Texas Tribune. Even the Texas mm -hmm. Tribune admits that McKinney High School got this wrong. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to talk about McKinney High School. I do want to talk about this bill. So it has the language changed from the, reg from the regular session. What page are we on? The top of page nine. If I remember correctly, and I don't have the, the original bill in front of me, I can pull it up, is that it was uh, prohibiting a student from, uh, from volunteering with an organization that lobbies. I'll grab the original. That's okay. Real quick. Yeah. Thanks. Highlighting in That's okay. Case. That's all right. Representative Toth, if you wouldn't mind getting me an answer to that question sure. after no, this I'd, is over. I'd be glad to. It's I appreciate the that. Highlighting in the I know. I, black believe me. I, it's, it's very hard keeping track of all, all these um, this legislative language, so I, I completely understand. Um, let, me, let me move on, and I, and I, I just have a few more questions. Thank you, uh, members and, and chairman, for your indulgence. Um, I want to ask about the origin of the bill, um, because bills just like this one are being filed in Republican legislatures around the country, correct? Yes, I, I, I've heard about several across the United States. Are you familiar with some of those bills that are being filed that are similar to yours? Sure. Are, have you coordinated with any of these other legislators around the country? No, legislators, no, I've not. Uh, any, I've, I've you, worked with the Texas Public Policy Foundation um, extensively on, on, uh, on this bill. Um, okay. And, and so you've coordinated with uh, Texas Public Policy Foundation, any other national groups that have been pushing this legislation in other states? No. The, the reason I ask is that the language in your bill uh, is nearly identical to the language in the bill that passed in Oklahoma, um, word for word. Um, whole sections of the Oklahoma bill well, the, are just okay, copy so and pasted. Oklahoma's bill was originally... Ours was drafted back in February, and they may have taken quite a bit of language from our bill. Their bill was initially a paragraph, and as I've looked at it lately, it's almost two pages now. So, so, so who, I, I, just wanna, I just wanna ask, who, who brought you the bill that, you, that you've been pushing in this uh, legislature? I worked with the Texas Public Policy Foundation to develop the bill. Oklahoma, who, Oklahoma used our language. So who wrote the Ohio, language for this bill? Ohio used our language as well. Florida used our language as well. And if you look at the 1964 Civil Rights Act, it looks a lot like that. So who, who wrote so, the language for this bill? 
I worked on it um, with the Texas Public Policy Foundation. With um, so was was it anyone outside of Texas that wrote this language? I, you know, were they influenced? Were TP, was TPPF influenced by other thought leaders across the United States? Probably. The, the reason I ask, there's, there's, I mean, you, you've got to understand there's collaborative thought. As you start seeing bills in other states, you look at it and say, wow, that's great language. We didn't consider that. That's great. So, and, and you kind of adopt some of that. Uh, the reason I'm at, it's a, it's a coordinated effort sure. across the country, and, and I, I want to make sure as an educator, as a member of the education... I don't know it's necessarily coordinated. I think it's, it's just a cumulative thing. Um, well, when it's copy-pasted, you know, it seems pretty coordinated to me. Was, to, was the to, person who, to, to, who worked to, on this language... A screen scrape is, is not. It, there's was, nothing coordinated about it. It's, as a member of this education committee, you, you were tasked with creating policy for 5.5 million Texas school children. So I guess I want to ask, was this language, whether it's from Oklahoma or whether it's from the Texas Public Policy Foundation... It's not from Oklahoma. And again, as I stated, we developed our language before Oklahoma did. So was the person who wrote this language an educator? We developed with ledge, with, with ledge Council and the Texas Public Policy Foundation. So, and actually, one of the individuals, um, we, actually, we actually developed with, with, a, with a university professor. Which university professor is that? It's a, it's a, he's, I'm not going to say the name of it yet because he hasn't taken the job on yet, but he's, he left TPPF to to join a, 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 a new university. Okay, and was, is, is he a professor of education? He has, he has his doctorate. In education? I, I don't know, honestly. Oh, okay. Gonna, I don't want to misrepresent. Okay, him, so. I'm, you know, I just, I want to make sure we are, if you're asking us as a education committee to, uh, to change education policy, that it, if it's not written by an educator or by a Texan, that it is at least in consultation you know, with I, I think, Texas educators. I think the most important thing is that this is adopted by parents and that parents have more to say about how their kids are educated than university professors. Do you have children? So, no, I do not have children. You don't? Okay. Uh, so I want to talk about the TA enforcement authority. This version of the bill that, that you're now bringing to us has a new provision related to the monitoring power of the Texas Education Agency. Is that correct? Are you talking about the transparency element in it? Uh, I'm talking about the part that says TEA shall monitor and enforce the parts of this bill. Do you Where know what you? section I'm referring to? Where are you? I'm, I apologize. No, that's okay. You're probably talking about the CIPs. I'm at, at the bottom of page 7, line 22. The agency shall ensure that each school district or open enrollment charter school teaches civics education as part of the district's social studies curriculum in a manner consistent with the essential knowledge and skills adopted in this bill. So I, the reason I ask is that the language is very specific. It says right. the agency shall uh, ensure. So I'd like to know how you imagine TEA will ensure compliance with this bill. Is it your intent that TEA collect data or implement any sort of audit procedure to ensure compliance? And if this so, is, what will the cost? It doesn't mention an audit, does it? So I'm asking, what, is it, what does it mean? It doesn't this mention is, an audit, does it? And, and so this is no different than in 2013 when we said the TEA, or I'm sorry, the State Board of Education shall have oversight of C-SCOPE. C-SCOPE was a curriculum that was bothersome to a lot of parents across the state of Texas. And, and it was, uh, and I can't remember the name, the Senate bill number, it was, it was authored by then Senator Dan Patrick. It said, the State Board of Education shall have oversight over CSCO. So I want to get back to this bill. Um, since it's a shall, you know, as you know, as a legislator, we can do may or shall. So you are tasking the Texas Education Agency, a lot of the folks who are sitting over here in the auditorium, with a new task, which is monitoring uh, and ensuring the compliance with this piece of legislation. Um, so I'd like to know, since you wrote this bill, or someone wrote this bill, um, what, what does that mean to you as the bill author? It simply means that what is being taught is consistent with, with the bill's intent, which is to teach civics and make sure that critical race theory 
is not used to inculcate or indoctrinate. Sure, and that's all well and good, but since, as you know, as a limited government champion yourself, that that task is going to require people, right, in an agency, right, during, this, during the workday. So I'm, I'm curious what that looks like at the agency and what the cost will be, because it doesn't happen for free, right? It's going to cost something. They didn't, they didn't believe it. there was a cost with it, it, it by virtue of the fact that this is, again, not something that, you know, it doesn't say that, that they're, doing, they're auditing individual classrooms or individual campuses or individual ISDs. It's, it's purely a situation where parents have the ability to reach out to the TEA or legislators have the ability to reach out to the TEA and say, House Bill 3979 and House Bill 28 ask this of, of uh, this local campus, and we need your help in enforcing it. Is your intent that TEA hire more staff to ensure compliance with your bill? No. So if not, who among the current TA employees should be tasked with ensuring that more than 1,200 know, school districts did, comply with your bill? We talked with the Texas Education Agency, Mike Morath, before we put this language in it. And so do you know who in the agency will be tasked with this new compliance? I'm not advised. Okay. Uh, is it your intent that TA implement sanctions against districts if, if those districts are not following your bill? Does that say so in this bill? I'm asking about your intent. No, it does not. So it's your, it, your intent that there should be no sanctions? It doesn't say that there are sanctions in this bill. I just want to make sure you're, asking, you're not being clever with your answer. Is it your intent as the bill author that there should be I'm sanctions? Sure, well, you know legislative intent doesn't matter when it goes to a court of law, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not in there. So if it's not in the bill, then it doesn't apply. Perfect. That's all I needed to know. I, Representative Toth, I appreciate you answering these difficult questions about your bill uh, and look forward to continuing the conversation. Mr. Tellerico, thanks for your time.